Hi folks, welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to be heading out to the range to conduct an experiment, but I wanted to set that experiment up for you here and show you what we're going to be doing exactly. The goal is to see if there is any practical difference, any noticeable difference, in the standard deviation of the velocities of 9mm ammunition that is loaded on the same machine, same process, but with mixed head stamps versus all matching head stamps, once fired brass, basically the same lot number, just to see if that variation in the brass causes any deficiencies in performance that, you know, maybe you'd like to, to sort your brass or try to always get the same brand uh, of brass for consistency's sake. Uh, for our all matching group here, we're using PPU head stamp brass, which is out of uh, Serbia, probably partisan. This was fired in one of our previous videos where uh, it was in the Monarch loading and gave really, really consistent results. We had about a 10 foot per second standard deviation on these in the factory load, which is really fantastic, especially for handgun ammunition. I mean, just really good. So we're gonna see if running off the progressive press, this does as well, so that maybe that brass has something to do with it. Our other group here is all mixed up. We have 14 different manufacturers in 11 different countries. We've got four up here for the United States. We have a nickel cased spear that was originally a plus P loading. We've got a WCC, which is Western Cartridge Company. That's Winchester's military loading. That's why you see the little NATO cross there, dated 2004. And this has definitely been previously reloaded because that primer pocket is reamed and I chamfer, um, well, I chamfer, I swage primer pockets rather than reaming them. So this is definitely someone else's reload that I am now using again. So it's, it's at least twice fired. This federal cartridge piece of brass here has some interesting deformation on the case head. Looks like maybe it was shot in a submachine gun or something. Kind of fascinating there piece of new production, RP, Remington Brass. Got down here in the International Brigade, GFL, which is Fiocchi out of Italy, MKE, which is a Turkish head stamp. This one is dated 2013. And it has a three-prong crimp and primer sealant here. So that might have been military ammunition, I'm not sure. We have S and B out of the Czech Republic with this casing being 2008 head stamped. Gecko, which is German production. TZZ, which is basically an old equivalent of IMI or IWI. It's Israeli. This one is from 1987, represents the oldest date on any of these. We have EDP, which is Olympic out of Greece. We've got CBC which is usually sold under the Magtech branding here uh, out of Brazil. MFS, which is a Hungarian head stamp. We've got Aguila, which is out of Mexico, and PMC from South Korea. So huge variety there, kind of your worst case scenario of mixed brass. I don't, I don't know that you could really do that other than trying to select such a, a random mix, but we're gonna compare these two strings here. Uh, I've got one extra PPU just in case we have any trouble with the chronograph on one of them. We might have an opportunity to collect the full amount of data that way. The way these were loaded on the progressive press was with alternating our standard batch here versus our mixed batch back and forth in the case feeder. So anything that might have happened in the powder hopper as far as settlement of the powder as the press was running, anything like that, uh, should be evenly spread throughout both uh, throughout both of the samples here. So without any more talking, let's get out to the range and see what kind of data we can collect on this. Today's test will be conducted using my Sig Sauer P210 American. It has a four and three quarter inch barrel. First, the PPU, all consistent head stamp.
And now let's see what all the mixed brass can do. On the targets here, on the left, we have all that PPU, and then on the right, we have the, the mixed brass. Not too much of a difference. I would say this is better, but on this, I don't think I'm shooting as well. The sun's starting to set, and it's getting in my eyes a little bit more, and I don't feel like I was doing as good of a job here. Is it the ammo? Is it me? Hard to say, but that's the difference side by side. And what a great trip to the range that was. We got some good data. We ended up not getting a reading on two of the PPU uh, sample. And we ended up not getting a reading on one of the mixed brass sample. So we ended up with 13 of each. That works out fine for us. And the data is, I think, a little bit, uh, a little bit surprising to me anyway. The spread of the PPU is 101, spread of the mixed is 100. Basically no difference. Your average velocity, 1069 versus 1056. Uh, I mean, that's basically no difference there. Your standard deviation, 26.59 for the PPU brass, 24.30 for the mixed, which, I mean, technically that that's better on the mixed. So I think what you're really seeing here, I mean, coefficient of variation, 2.49% versus 2.30%. You're talking about an inconsequential difference. It just doesn't matter. Uh, maybe this has something to do with the powder that I'm using. Uh, I'm using tight root powder, which is a fairly fast burner and doesn't have a very high uh, charge weight or volume for that matter, it's just a fairly small charge. So perhaps that is causing the differences to not be quite so pronounced. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm using plated bullets that are, you know, softer than jacketed bullet like you might have in a factory load, typically. So maybe that's causing the variation and we're not getting the, the consistency that we might see otherwise but as far as the way i'm loading using plated bullets and tight group it just doesn't matter uh, sorting brass would be seemingly a total waste of time so i guess we learned something i'm not gonna waste my time sorting any brass not that i have in the past but i certainly won't start doing it if you guys found this interesting or helpful go ahead like and subscribe uh, these videos do don't usually do especially well. They're kind of dull and, and technical, but if you guys are watching to the end, I appreciate you, and check back on the next one. Have a good one.